Hello everyone, and welcome to our Hackalate tutorial. In today's session, we're going to be talking about one of the particular introductory topics that I think are very useful for you to get started with Hackalate Studio. Specifically, we'll be talking about our polyglot data modeling capability. This is extensively documented on our website. Obviously, there's some great articles here that you can take a look at, but to give you a quick overview, let's go through a couple of slides here. Polyglot data modeling really originated in a discussion and a, um, a lot of deep thought around how to deal with the these different levels of data modeling that have been traditionally been used in the time where the relational databases still ruled the world, right? Uh, at that time, we had these three levels. We had conceptual, logical, and physical data modeling, whereby the conceptual and logical levels were always supposed to be technology agnostic. However, the logical level was always supposed to be a normalized data model, which is, in effect, a contradiction. Why? Because obviously with the advent of all of these new types of data technologies, you really can't say that the logical technology agnostic view of the world has to be normalized. In a new polyglot persistence data architecture, you will have lots of different parts to your application. Lots of different technologies will work together to compose one particular e-commerce platform, for example, in the 21st century. You will have your inventory and your item pricing in the relational database. You will have the shopping cart and session data in a key value store. You will have your product catalog and your completed orders in a document store, etc., etc., etc. You can read it from the screen. So obviously, in this landscape, it doesn't make sense to start normalizing everything at the logical level. We will have a need for a technology agnostic view of our data architecture that is independent of all of these different types of data stores. On top of that, we also know that you know, every organization that develops these types of 21st century applications will want to have some kind of consistency across all of these types of data stores, which means that they will have to make sure that you know, everything evolves in lockstep at the same time and things don't break when the schemas evolve. Therefore, organizations are building pipelines, right? They are building structured ways of dealing with these different types of data architectures and therefore there is an increasing need to have a, um, an overarching umbrella data model for all of your data components. This is why Hackalade has come up with a polyglot data model, which is in effect, you know, somewhat similar to a logical data model, but also similar to a physical data model. And it even has some ideas and some concepts of a conceptual data model included in it. A polyglot data model effectively sits across the boundary between logical and physical data models. And we sometimes refer to it as a logical model on steroids. You know, it's a logical model with lots of additional functionality. Specifically, a polyglot data model allows for denormalization at this technology agnostic higher level of data modeling. And it allows for complex data types, things like nested structures, for example. And in effect, it will represent a common physical model that will allow you to generate schemas, you know, technical artifacts for a variety of different technologies with automated mapping between all of the different data types of the respective target technologies. It also has a lot of functionality that allows you to reuse and leverage a library of canonical objects for your domains so that you can use them consistently across all of your physical data models just so everyone understands, a polyglot data model is an umbrella data model that sits across all of these underlying physical data models. Right? So there's a master data model at the top, or multiple master data models at the top, that are driving the underlying physical data models that are specific to a particular target technology. I think this is a helpful picture. It's a helpful picture because it shows you how you can have multiple polyglot models, right? a polyglot 1 data model with the blue uh, rectangles, a polyglot 2 data model with the uh, red uh, circles, and a polyglot 3 data model with the green triangles. And what you can see at the bottom here is that as you actually derive target models, right, so physical data models from these different polyglot models, you can mix and match them. You can draw E11, E12, and E13 from polyglot 1, but at the same target A physical model include things like E21 and E23, right? So you mix and match these things together, you combine them as you see fit, and you link these different data models together as you need them. This is how you can maintain that governance, maintain that consistency across all of your different data models. I mentioned earlier that there are some conceptual modeling concepts in a polyglot data model, and that's specifically in what we call the graph view, right? When you 
work with a polyglot data model, you will see that there are these graph representations of your data model where you can basically have a higher level representation of the entities and the relationships in a model delivered by this graph diagram. With that, we're going to wrap up this uh, section in our Hackley tutorial. I would love to refer you to a lot of reading material that we have available for you, both online, on our blog, in the books, multiple. We have the MongoDB Data Modeling and Schema Design book that uh, Pascal Desmarais co-authored. But we have a bunch of other books that are already available on Amazon or forthcoming uh, very, very soon. And uh, I would love to see you on our socials, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. And of course, please uh, download the Hackolate Studio for free. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help. And I wish you a very happy rest of your day. Thank you.